Okay then, we have two waves that we're adding up. We have y1, which is a cosine kx minus omega t, which as you well know, that's the wave that goes towards the right. We have y2, also a cosine kx but plus omega t, that's the wave that goes to the left. Now, k and omega is going to be the same because it's the same rope under the same tension. And the amplitude we're going to say is the same, partly for simplicity and partly we're going to assume the reflection was perfect. And so the overall what you see on the rope is the sum of these two. Okay, so expanding y1 and y2, we have a cosine kx minus omega t plus a cosine kx plus omega t, which of course you can expand using sum of angles. Cos, cos plus sine sine for the first one. We're just going to factor the a out of everything just to make things simple. And then you have cos, cos minus sine sine. That's kx omega t, kx omega t, kx omega t, and kx omega t. This last term cancels out. And we have simply left with 2a cosine kx cosine omega t. Notice how we no longer have the kx minus omega t combined phase, so that's why the wave is not traveling. Instead, what we have is we have some kind of spatial periodic movement which then within it has the cosine time dependence. So it kind of bobs up and down within this spatial envelope like that here. Funny thing to notice, um, one wavelength is two humps, not one hump, but two humps because of the plus and minus nature of the cosine omega t. So remember that when we start to do calculation with these things. But once again, because we're adding up two waves that come together in opposite direction, we instead of having a phase that is in the form of kx minus omega t, which is a traveling wave, we end up with a product of a spatial um, variation. And in time, it also changes over time, but separately. So that's why we end up with the standing wave. As a quick aside, uh, just to show you how we can also do this using complex exponential. Oops, minus omega t um, plus a di kx plus omega t. We end up with a di kx times i omega t minus i omega t plus e i omega t which then of course as you recognize cosine theta is i theta plus e i minus theta over 2 so this must be 2 a cosine omega t times e t i k x so very very similarly very very quickly we can also use complex exponential to show you that we once again end up with a spatial oscillation that defines kind of the cosine or sine term that gives you that, which is then modulating a cosine temporal variation. Once again, it just kind of goes whoop, it goes down, whoop, whoop doo, and poor sketch there. But once again, do take note that one wavelength looks like that. So it takes two of those humps to give you one wavelength. Now let's do a quick example. 